Hey guys, this is Ron. So this is video 12 in our series on rediscovering the C programming language. In this video, we're going to be talking about working with files. So we're going to learn to open files, close files, read from, write to, uh, get some status information about a file, and then we'll discuss uh, how to figure out your file position, right? So in our examples, we'll open, close, read, write. Uh, I should have time to do stat, and I'll probably skip file position, but I'll show you uh, where to get information about it. So here I have a uh, link to a article on Stack Overflow. Uh, a gentleman asked, uh, what, would this, what was the difference between a file descriptor and a file pointer? And so as we're working with files, that distinction uh, will come up from time to time. So the file descriptor is an integer value uh, that the kernel uses to identify uh, files, streams, things of that nature. Um, whereas a file pointer is something that we'll see when we start using some of the libc functions like fwrite, fopen, uh, fclose, stuff like that. For you, uh, well, for me really, for anyone using, you know, C, the difference between the two, uh, as described in the article, is that the file pointer is a buffered interface, and so when you write to it, uh, the kernel will decide when it's when it has time to actually carry that out, write to the file, write it to disk, right? And so if you're expecting the data to be automatically there right away, uh, you may find that you're, uh, you know, you're wrong or uh, it's not going to be there when you need it. So there are a couple things that you can do. You can either close the file, which will force it to write to the file, or you can run something called F flush, which will force it again to write to the file, right? In our case, we're just going to close the file, which will cause it to write. Um, as we're going through, you'll see you can have F open or just open. Uh, open is the syscall version, and it's going to return a file descriptor. This is a slightly lower level uh, way of, you know, uh, opening a file. Fopen is the libc way of doing it. It gives you a file pointer back, and this is the one that you should be using, right? There's, there, uh, there are a few reasons why you might want to do a slightly lower level way of doing, uh, of working with the file. Uh, but for most of your uh, operations, fopen, these ones that return file descriptors, this is what you're going to want to use, right? So I have F open, I have F close. Uh, if I slide down here, I have F read and F write. And so those are the ones that we'll use um, during this video. So let's jump right into an example um, of opening a file. It's essentially gonna create that file if it doesn't exist. Um, and then we'll go ahead and write some data to it. Okay, so I'll call this vi, um, we'll call this new file dot c. We'll do a pound include stdio dot h, just like we've done uh, for the past little bit so that we can write uh, to the terminal. We won't pass anything into our main function. Let's go ahead and look uh, what fopen expects. So we're going to have to use stdio.h, which we've already brought in. We're going to have to give it a path name and some type of mode, right? And that's going to go ahead and return our file pointer. So what do we need for mode? So if I slide down, I can see that mode uh, basically determines the, you know, the way that we're, the file is opened. Right? It's going to be open for read, read and write, write, uh, read and write again, uh, append, uh, reading and appending. So there's these different modes that we can specify. Now, in the case of write, um, this is going to truncate a file. So if it currently exists, I'm essentially going to overwrite it. 
If I didn't want to do that, I would open it maybe in append mode. So I write to the end of the file, right? For our example, we're just going to do W and we're going to go ahead and overwrite it if it currently exists. Okay, so let's do our file pointer. We'll just call this FP for file pointer. And we'll say FP is equal to F uh, open. And we need to specify some name. Now in my case, I'm gonna just pound define it up here. Um, so this will define, I can't spell today. Pound define. Since I'm gonna end up using this file name in multiple places, um, I'll just build it up here, okay? And we'll call it my file. And we'll opening, uh, open it in write mode. And there we go. So the file should be open at this point in our program. So what is a expected return? All right, so return value uh, on successful completion should be the file pointer itself. Otherwise, null is returned and error no is set indicating the error. So maybe for whatever reason, we're on a, a read-only file system, so I can't write to a file. Or maybe the file exists uh, where we're trying to write it, but we don't have permissions to overwrite it, right? So there could be a couple of things that, you know, maybe we're out of uh, space on our disk. Um, you know, there could be a couple different things that happen. So we need to check to see, you know, what's going on with our file pointer. So if null is equal to our FP, we know that something went wrong. So F printf standard error, and we'll just say unable to open our open percent S for right. And this would be my file. And we'll go ahead and return a non-zero error code so that our program knows that something something went wrong. All right? If we're down here, we know it opened fine, and we'll go ahead and try to write to it. So man f write. And so we need to specify what we want to write to it. We have some type of buffer that we're gonna to write to it. The size of the thing we're gonna write and the number of those items that we're gonna write and then the stream that we're gonna to write to. And what comes back is the number of bytes that we wrote to it, okay? So let's specify our size underscore T bytes. And then we'll have a char star out buffer and we'll just say, I want to write to a file. We'll even put a carriage return on the end for good measure. And we'll say uh, our bytes is equal to F write. And we're going to write out buffer. Our out buffer is made of, of uh, chars so size of char we're going to do sterlen on our out buffer so the number of characters uh, that we're going to write and we're going to write that to our file stream now because I'm using sterlen I'm going to pound include string.h so that I get access to that and now we should have that written into our buffer. Now at this point, you know, the kernel can decide when it wants to write, um, but we're gonna go ahead and print F. We're gonna say percent LD bytes written. All right, so if everything works correctly, we should see some uh, bytes written. Now, we've opened it, We've written to it, so now we need to close our file. So F close, F close uh, returns just did it work or did it not work, right? And then all we have to pass to it is our file pointer, right? 
So on successful completion, zero is returned. Otherwise, end of file is returned and error number is or error no is set. Right. So we should expect a zero to be returned. So we'll do. Uh, if I come up here, I can specify int result, and I'll say result equals f close fp. So I'm going to close my file pointer if zero is not equal to result. We're going to say f print f. I'm going to send this a standard error. Unable to close file. Something happened uh, when we attempted to close our file. And we could even specify the actual file name. Uh, even though we pretty much know what it is. But just for completeness, we'll do that. And we'll return a non-zero error code. And if we've gotten down to this point, everything is working correctly. So return zero. So our zero error code. Our status code. All right. So make, what do we call this thing? We called this new file. So make new file. All right, so everything compiled correctly. We run it, it says 29 bytes were written. And I can see that there is a test file here. And it contains what we wanted, right? So pretty simple. We opened our file, we wrote to it. So open file. If I could type, we have our uh, write to file. We have our close file. So let's go ahead and reopen it and then go ahead and read from it. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing. Essentially, we're going to see a lot of similar stuff. So we're going to open the file again. We're going to close our file again. Instead of um, reading or writing from our writing to our file, we're going to go ahead and read from it. So man f read again stdio.h. Okay, so we need some type of buffer that we're going to write to and how much we want to write to that, or basically read from the file, our file stream, and then the number of bytes that we actually read from it, right? Because we may say, hey, I want to read a thousand bytes, but the file's only, you know, a hundred bytes long, and so uh, we should expect a smaller return. So we're going to reuse bytes, but we need now a buffer. So let's do char, uh, in buffer and we'll give this thing a hundred bytes uh, and we'll go ahead and zeroize it to begin with so we're gonna write zeros across it so we have a nice clean buffer even though we're just gonna end up writing uh, and we'll do bytes equals f read and this is our in buffer size of char and in this case, I'm going to go ahead and also do a size of in buffer. And I'm doing this because I know this is an array and size of works on arrays like this. Um, I'm going to subtract one so that I know that it's at least going to be null terminated at that last uh, byte position. And I'm going to specify my file pointer. So. What I should expect to see is that in buffer now has something and bytes has the number of bytes that I, I read. So let's go and check. So we'll do a printf. We'll say bytes percent LD. We'll say bytes red so that we can tell the difference. And we'll go ahead and put our string at the end, right? So bytes. And we'll do in buffer. And that should work. Let's give it a try. 
So what do we call this again? Make new file. So it compiled just fine. And so we wrote to the file again, overriding its current content, contents. Uh, but we must have made some type of error because bytes read is zero and we definitely didn't get a string out. So what did we do wrong? So let's see. We, oh, we opened our file in read mode or in write mode. So we ended up zeroizing it again. So if we uh, make this a read, we'll rebuild our file, run it. And now this time we wrote 29 bytes to it, then closed the file. Then we opened it back up, read from it, got 29 bytes back, and we have our contents of the file. Cool. Now, what would happen if this was a really large file? Um, and so I don't wanna specify this enormous buffer. In my case, I have a buffer that is you know, perfectly fine, but just in case, what if um, my buffer was small in comparison to the file itself? So I'll say my buffer is only five bytes. Um, so I'm only gonna read four bytes at a time, right? Because this should be five bytes minus one. So I'm only gonna get four bytes back. Will it still work? So I make it, I run it. I'm able to read my four bytes, but again, obviously there's more uh, in the file that I, I uh, didn't get a chance to read. So this might be where we throw in some type of loop. So let's do a while loop here. And we'll say bytes equals f read uh, size of blah, blah, blah. And we're gonna go ahead and close that. And we'll say as long as this is greater than zero, I know I've at least read something from the file. So let me put my bracket there. Now, because I might end up reading something that's smaller uh, on that last one, I'm gonna go ahead and set uh, a, you know, the number of bytes you know, will indicate how far into my buffer you know I was, and I'll write a zero there to ensure that my string is always null terminated, even if I read uh, less than four bytes. So we, what we can do is in buffer bytes equals zero. So this will null terminate. So if I'm reading four bytes at a time, um, and on the last try through, I only get two bytes. Uh, so those two bytes are gonna be indexed position zero and one. So in position then two, if I write a zero there, I know I'll null terminate um, that shorter string, right? And so now let's uh, bring this up here. Oops, print F. And I'll close out, all right? And so we can remake that. I see no errors. And it looks like I want to write to a file. So I was able to read four bytes each time. And then on the last read, I only got one byte, which was the carriage return. Uh, and then, you know, it worked. And so if we come back up to the top and we make our buffer. Um, let's say we make our buffer 10 bytes. I should see three reads, right? So if I run, I get nine, 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 and then I get the last one, which is two bytes, the final exclamation point, and then that carriage return, right? So I, it wasn't 10, 10, 10, it was you know, one less than, but what we can see is that we're able now to chunk up um, the file and so I don't have to have an enormous buffer. I can just read you know, a bit at a time. And maybe that makes sense in the context of you know, what I want, um, but maybe it doesn't. So you know, it depends on you know, what you're doing. But we've essentially uh, opened it, closed it, wrote to it, uh, read from it. Um, there might be a time where you, know, you um, 
also want to check to see if you've gotten uh, to the end of the file. And so we can man F E O P, I believe. Nope, man F E O F, end of file. Makes more sense. So uh, what we can do is run this across our file pointer and it will let us know if we've reached end of file. We can also run F error and that will let us know if, if we've encountered some type of error as well, right? So that might be in our uh, loop. So we can keep reading until we get, until this turns to a one. And then uh, that's when we know to stop looping. In my case, I based it on the number of characters um, that I was reading from it. So I based it on as long as I'm getting characters back, I'm gonna keep reading, right? But my check might just be if FEOP of my file pointer uh, is, you know, is one, right? Because uh, this should have a return. Uh, let's see. FEO test the end of file indicator for the stream pointed to by stream returning non-zero if it is set. So as long as it's greater than zero or not equal to zero, so non-zero, we should probably do not equals to zero. And that's going to let me know that I'm at the end of file, which will terminate me looping uh, through here, right? So different ways of, of attacking it, um, but it seems like this one works as well. Um, and so that's what uh, you know we'll do for this exercise. So if I look down, uh, I do have uh, status information that I can get uh, from a file, right? And so we have fstat and we have stat, right? So fstat looks like it takes a file descriptor, whereas stat looks like it takes a path name, right? So let's go ahead and do stat. Um, we'll go ahead and close that out and we'll do uh, uh, get stat.c. So this will be pound include stio.h. And let's go ahead and see what stat's gonna take. Now, if I just do man stat, it's gonna find that there's a stat command itself, right? So this is an actual command. But if I do a man two stat, I'm gonna find that there is a syscall for stat, which is what we're going to use. And it takes all of these header files in order to accomplish it. So if I come here, I'll go ahead and paste those in. Um, let me remove all of that in main. And let's see, what does stat take? All right, so stat is gonna take some type of path name and then it's gonna fill out this structure, which we haven't really seen structures too much in this series yet, uh, but essentially we have this struct um, that is gonna hold a bunch of information about that file. If we slide down a little bit, it gives us an idea of what that looks like. So there's this stat struct um, that uh, gives a device ID, the inode number, the, the mode of it, um, if it uh, has hard links, uh, who owns it, um, who, what group owns it, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, it also gives when it was, you know, accessed, modified, changed. So lots of information that we can find out about that file. Now, the reason we might be doing this is one, to see if that file exists, right? Um, before you go and try to open a file, to read from it, you may want to first look to see, does the file actually exist? And so these are, you know, maybe some tests that you can do prior to opening it and potentially, you know, breaking something, right? So what we can do, if I come back to my top here, uh, I just need the path name and my struct, right? And so I'll do, uh, let's see, I'll do my struct stat, and we'll just call this thing SB. And I can also uh, initialize that at zero. All right, so this whole struct will be filled with zeros to start with. And what does my struct return? So some type of status code. 
So let's do int result. And we'll do result equals stat. Uh, what did we call our file name? I think it was test file. And I'm going to pass in, if we notice, this is going to take a pointer to our stat buff. Um, so I'm gonna pass in the address of SB. And so that's essentially gonna pass that into stat and stat will fill out that structure for me, All right? So what is the return? These functions return information about a file. That's not what I want. It's not what I want. It's not what I want. Return value. On success, zero is returned. So what we can do is if result is not equal to zero, we know something went wrong. Uh, f, print f, um, unable to stat percent s, so we know which file we're talking about. Um, I'll go ahead and delete this again. My, uh, come on, pound define, We'll call this my file again. And nope, that's not what I want. Undo that. Come on. Undo. No, oh, not the whole thing. Oh. Killing me, smalls. Pound define my file. Test file. I'm trying to see if just test to write it out myself. My BIM skills are weak today. All right, my file, and then my file. All right, all right. So assuming we're here, something at least went right. So we can print F, and we can say, what do we want to know about our file? If I slide up and look, and I look, let's see, I can find the mode, uh, I can find the UID, so let's print out the owner's ID. So I'm guessing, so we'll do a, uh, this is UID. UID, I'm guessing a percent LD, we'll find out. Um, and then this is gonna be SB dot ST underscore UID. So we're, now we're gonna find the owner and we can find the mode of the file, All right? So file type and mode. So print F mode percent LD. SB and our mode. For now, that's what we're gonna leave it with. So assuming everything worked correctly, we called this thing get stat. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open another tab so that I can leave that open. And I will make get stat. And it threw a fit all over the place. So let's start at the top. Passing one, oh, we forgot. I do this all the time. Oops. Standard error. There was a fit when you uh, don't actually put the stream in there. So that's fine with that. Um, it says this is an unsigned int. So a long int. Uh, let's see, unsigned int. So, which what I thought would have been an LD. Did I not, or did I do wrong? So it's saying just do percent D. So we'll take the LD out. Is it complaining about the next one too? Mode, it's saying use percent D as well. So clear that out, make it. All right. So I didn't put any carriage returns in, so it looks ugly. So we'll 
make it, we'll run it, and says, okay, UID is 1000, which makes sense, because um, that's uh, my ID currently. So my UID is 1000. And mode is this really big number, right? So that's a little confusing, right? Um, and so if we look uh, at the man page here for mode, and I do a search on mode, um, it mentions in a couple different places about what the uh, mode field means. And it mentions here to look under inode for further information. So if I look for man seven of inode, so man seven inode, I can do a search for mode again. File type and mode, okay. See the discussion for mode type below. So I'm gonna do, just keep scrolling down until I get here and now what I find is there are certain things that I can look up um, with this. And so let's see if they talk about it, but they end up talking about, you can look up to see if that's a socket, a socket link. Is this a regular file, a block device? Is this a directory? And so it you know, gives you an example then of how to figure that out. So you can bitwise and it with this S I F M T and see if it's equal to here. So essentially this is going to bit mask these bit positions and then it's going to compare uh, with this value then and see you know if it matches. Now you could do that or if you keep sliding down you find out there's a nice macro that does that for you. Right? So we can find out is this a regular file. So if I copy that um, so what I can do is instead of mode, um, well, I'll do a printf reg file and we'll do percent LD and we should have, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in and this is our sb.st underscore mode close that out. So I'm going to run that macro across the same mode and that will identify whether this is a regular file. All right, so if I make it, uh, so it's telling me, nope, it's not an LD, it's a D. All right. Should have known that from the first time around. We run it. It says, yes, in fact, this is a regular file. And we could check that again by saying printf directory percent D. And this should be is dir copy paste. And this is our sb.st underscore mode. All right, we can rebuild or recompile, run it, and no, it is not a directory. So we know it's a regular file, it is a directory. Um, we can look to see what if I made this, instead of test file, it's test files. We can recompile, rerun it. Oh wait, I'm unable to stat test files. Well, if we go back and look at man2stat, um, we should be able to find that error note is set appropriately. So on success, zero is returned. On error, negative one is returned. And error no is set appropriately. So we can then compare it against these error values. And in our case, I just specified a file that doesn't exist. So we should see something like this, right? A component of path name does not exist, right? So eno int. So what we can do is, um, so we can't stat it, that's fine. If erno, if I could spell it, is equal to 
Eno Ent, or yeah, so Eno Ent. We could F, print F, standard error. Oops. File does not exist. Or we could say percent %s does not exist. And we could do my file. Close out our if statement. Write. Um, I forgot one piece. Because I'm using error no, I have to actually pound include. I believe it's error man error no yes so I have to include error no dot h so I'll rebuild or recompile rerun it and now it will say hey test files does not exist so if I uh, move test file to test files rerun it does in fact work now All right so remove test files if I run the stat program again again it tells me it doesn't exist and that's fine right so that's exactly what it's supposed to do it tried to run stat on it it encountered an error it checked to see if eno int uh, was what error no was set to. That means, hey, file doesn't exist, so I print that out. Otherwise, if everything went correctly, I use that uh, struct uh, that uh, got filled out by stat to you know look up information, so I can find the owner, I can find what the mode is set to, and all of that information might be useful to you when you go to you know read write you know do different things to the file okay so i'll try to clean that up a little bit before i push it to github uh, the last thing i will talk about is fseek and ftel uh, i'm 37 ish minutes in so i'm not gonna do an example of this but essentially once we've opened a file we can do fseek with that file pointer and figure out where we are in the file so it will tell us the byte position that we're at in the file so if i look up uh man f seek it's again going to take a stream offset and whence right now whence is a little weird that's not a name you see all the time but it says if whence is set to seek set seek cur seek end the offset is relative to the start of the file so seek set is start of the file seek cur is the current position indicator seek end is end of file respectively all right so f seek will move uh so sorry i misspoke earlier f seek will move to a certain position within the file and so in, this is not a byte position that's returned, which is why it's only an integer. It's indicating whether or not this worked correctly. And so you can base off where you want to move in the file from the start of the file, the current position where you are in the file, or from the end of the file, right? So again, that will help you move within the file. So you open it up, take your file pointer, indicate um, either, either at the beginning of the file uh, where you're currently at in the file or at the end of the file and then the offset position that you want to go to uh, in there right so if you're starting from the end your offsets probably going to be uh, negative because you're moving backwards right now f tell on the other hand this is what i was you know incorrectly spoke for f tell will tell you where you currently are in the in the file itself so you give it the file pointer you call ftel and it returns a long that will tell you you know uh, where you are so your position indicator uh, in the stream right so it shouldn't be too difficult uh, to implement those 
um, but like I said, we're getting long in the, the pro or in the video and nobody ends up, you know, really watching this long anyway. Um, so F seek is how you move in the file to a, a certain position. F tell us is how you tell where you're in, uh, the current, uh, position. So function obtains the current value of the file position indicator for the stream pointed to by stream. All right. Now there are a couple other ones in here, rewind, F get position, F set positions, or alternative interfaces, equivalent to F tell and F seek, uh, so on and so forth. So you can you know, read this a little bit more yourself if you want, um, but essentially F seek is how you're gonna move in the file, F tell is how you're gonna figure out where you are in the file, okay? So I hope this was helpful. Uh, this is how you uh, work with files in C. So thanks for watching. Bye.